Ladies and gentlemen, my name is John Belkowitz. I am the director of R&D at Intelligent Concrete, where we specialize in making concrete do the impossible. Today's Q&A day, we've got an awesome question on colloidal silica, one of my favorite topics from, uh, in concrete, and I'm really surprised that we've never talked about this. Uh, the Q&A was, uh, what is the difference between colloidal silica versus potassium silicate versus sodium silicate, and I'll even include lithium silicate in that. And I'm excited to go into this question. This is one of those research questions that I love. Sorry, I've got a bit of a, a rash on my arm, so I'm playing with my uh, my sleeves. But the reason why I like, like this question so much is it, it dives into not only the scientific world that I, I love to use those three to four syllable words, but also bounces back over to the practical side, not only the historical use of concrete, but also the new and emerging technology. So let's just dive into it. So colloidal silica is a dispersion of ultrafine amorphous nano silica particles, particles anywhere between 3 and 100 nanometers that are normally grown um, from ripping and stripping apart potassium and sodium silicates and allowing that silica, that SiO2, to polymerize or to grow on top of each other until it becomes a certain size and then you stop that growth and it's just flipping pure silica with a little bit of some type of a cursor on it to create a double layer to you know for a force field to keep it from sticking to each other when it bounces into either other particles or adjacent silica particles so that's colloidal silica liquid dispersion um, and again I think the key thing is a higher purity of silica or a higher content of silica than salt. If we look at sodium oxide as a stabilizing agent, there's normally 0.2% or lower of sodium oxide, it's depending on the size of the particle and the dispersion and the solid content, and 99.8 silica. Now, how does that differ from potassium or sodium or lithium silicate? The concept is nanosilica larger particles of a pure form of silica in a given cross-sectional area. The potassium, sodium, and lithium silicates is a silica or silicate attached to a salt that's the carrying agent. So in a given cross-sectional area or for a given weight of solid, you're going to have more salt than you will silica in a potassium, sodium, or lithium silicate dispersion as compared to colloidal silica where you have more silica, much more silica compared to salt. Now, the other side of it, outside of the silica, the reactivity, most potassium, sodium, and lithium silicates will react faster than your colloidal sil silica dispersions. The best place uh, for you to see that is densifying agents. There are a lot of great companies out there that sell not only the, I'm gonna call them older school silicates, potassium, sodium, lithium, but they also sell a newer version of that polishing agent or that densifying agent for polishing floors in a colloidal silica form. So you can actually get two products from the same company, old versus new technology, and try them out on the floor, and what you're going to see or experience with the colloidal silica is a deeper penetration and it's going gonna, it's gonna to manifest in the way of, it's going to look like it's drying. What's actually happening is you're getting a greater migration of that product into the concrete surface than you're going to get with your silicate versions of that because normally those silicates will react at the surface creating a gel and I don't want to say stopping but slowing down the migration of that solution into the body of the concrete. Colloidal silicas, it's not going to react as fast because it is a larger particle compared to the solutes in solution. So again, it's not going to react. It's going to allow it to go deeper into the, I don't want to say body because that's putting a general statement on all colloidal silica products. That's just not necessarily the case. So say su uh, surface and then subsurface and some particles or dispersions are designed in a way that they can even go from subsurface into the body of the concrete with the colloidal silicas. I, I, penetration of the silicates are going to be much, much lower. Now that being said, the silicates are not a bad product when, when compared to the silicates. 
there's a place in the industry for both of them. So I, I you know, the impetus of this video was education on uh, the differentiation between these two types of technologies. What I want to point out is one is not better than the other. One is going to do something different than the other. And there are places in the industry for both of the technologies. And as long as you're using both of the technologies in the manufactured back of the suit can method, then you're going to make a better concrete, and that's the most important part. So as, as much as I love colloidal silica, I do have a fine and wonderful appreciation for the silicates, and I've designed with them many, many times. That being said, there are places for both of these, and it really depends on what your job site is, what you're trying to get out of it, and most importantly, what your budget is um, to include one or sometimes even both of these technologies. So. Um, Sean, thank you very much for the question. We hope we answered that. Please let us know if you have any other questions. We do have other videos on colloidal silica to give you a little bit more information, but this was a great question that I don't know why we hadn't addressed in the past, but thank you very much, man. Appreciate your time. Uh, I guess that's it for today. Hope you learned something. Let us know if you got any concrete questions, concrete concerns. Um, go concrete, boot it asphalt. Wait a second. I've got to do this riddle for our contest that we're doing. We are willing to enter you into a contest to get a handheld penetrometer if and only if you do the following. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, ding the bell, and share the video. Do those four simple tasks and you'll get entered into a contest to win the handheld penetrometer. Thanks again for joining us. Go Concrete! Beat us all!